Well, I'll tell you what. That shows. It's like the show I watched Monday night. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome. I am the one, the only. Well, I'm more than just being a hobo. I am Hobo Tom. I'm here to talk about a little bit about AEW. But first, I have shout-outs to give. For many people, have been getting back in touch with me. I think mainly because on Tuesdays I do a live stream. Um, I'm not technically there yet to do live streams all the time because live streams seems to be the way to go. But I have a couple people to thank. Toma! Thank you. And yes, I would like to be, I guess, friends. However you do that. But you, you've won twice with me because you got a six count. Loda or lot yeah Lada. I don't know Loda or Lada. All depends how you pronounce it, I guess. Everyone knows that you are a master of the air drums, though. <laughs>
Michael V. Thank you very much. Although they did pinpoint when Fighter Fest is going to be. I'll get into that later. But you, sir, definitely have your ear to that briefcase boombox. Janetti Spaghetti, you, sir, can crawl out of here. I think we were trying to figure out, or I couldn't figure out who uh, Darby Allen's girlfriend was, and it's Priscilla Kelly, I think. Uh, the infamous tampon girl. Yes, because um, she was there spotted at AEW. I think she is a member of AEW. I, I know Darby's part of AEW. She's probably just there to, she's probably one of the many women, one of the many filler women in AEW. Dead Man Blaze. You, sir, always win by Dirty Pin. Maybe it was you that told me about Fighter Fest. I think it was either you or Mike V. So any spaghetti is normally useless. But, oh, yay! Oh, what did you do? Texting time! Um, and last but not least... Nerd! You, sir, are a member of the El Generico Band! That's all the sh thank yous and shout outs. Again, if you would like to get your own video dedication, you can always either do it a couple of ways. You can interact with me over at the Discord on WooTube. I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. Um, that, or you can comment. I do tend to check email. I should check, check my email eventually. I have to make sure I'm okay because Tuesdays, instead of watching. Bad, instead of watching bad TNT commercials or uh, bad Access TV commercials or, or just dead air, I've been doing hobo karaoke. Um, so I want to make sure I'm not in a copyright violation of anything. And so you can email, comment, subscribe, like. Yeah, that sounds about right. And share. That's the other one I always forget. Uh, one day, I don't know. I don't know if I should make a, my own Facebook page. That would be weird. That's okay. Well, let's talk about some AEW. AEW has gone, in my opinion, very quickly from sports space. Oh God, I can't believe I'm saying this. It's gone from like sports space pro wrestling to now it's becoming very WWE-ish and the fact that I think for a two-hour show wait, how many, yeah they only had I think like one, two they only like five matches that's very impact-ish like I think Smackdown normally has four wrestling matches for a show 
And then for a while, Raw had like, I think at most like, once at like eight. But AEW, they don't want to be copying what WWE does. I like the fact that they, I think the good thing is with AEW, uh, when they do have non-wrestling segments, they tend, they tend to be short. But the thing is, you can have one 10 minute long segment or you can have five two minute long segments. You're still taking away 10 minutes and some matches are probably more competitive than they should have been. But that's okay. Let's get to some AEW. So AEW starts off. Um, they do have, uh, I think uh, TNT fun little thing. Black lives matter. Um, all lives matter. Please don't hurt me. Don't hurt the cute Asian girls here in Daytona Beach in bikinis. Um, don't hurt the cops. Cops don't don't tase me. I'm trying to think what else. Um, I don't know. The black people are, are, are kind of nice. Let's see here. What else is there? So for those Brazilians, they always make a mess in the shoe store, though. I can never do that. But, yeah, so they have their own little message. I'm not going to get into it. Um, I've heard very mixed things. I've heard that the peaceful protesters are peaceful. They kind of leave when they're, when, they're, when they're told to. They're like, okay, it's 8 o'clock. Clear the streets, everyone. And for the most part, the peaceful people do that. But then there's always idiots that say, no, we're going to start throwing rocks, and they throw rocks, and yeah, you're going to get tear gassed. It's, it's pretty simple like that. I know there was one instance of where protesters actually barricaded a street, and there was a fire in the building. And because of the protesters, the fire department couldn't get to said burning building. That's counterproductive to what you're supposed to be doing. I'll tell you what, heaven forbid any mass of people ever go down I-92. I don't think there's enough body bags because, oh, listen, it's bad enough. People out there think it's the Daytona 500 every day of the year. Yeah, you, like you don't cross the street. Like, you just cross the street with a white, with a little um, green person symbol. You're taking your life in your hands. <laughs> Much less when it's a red stop or a do not cross sign. So that would be interesting. I think there were like rumors and innuendo that like they were going to go ride at the mall. Why? I think half the stores aren't even open. Unless they're going to go loot the bookstore. Oh, they loot the bookstore. Your store also seems to get looted a lot for some reason. Well, well, Target and Foot Locker for some reason. I don't know. But yeah, I, I've had I've I've very quietly disagreed with some of my coworkers on my other job about this whole thing. It's like, well, I want to go there to the protest. It's like, I want to be here and get paid because because getting paid's good because people don't realize like the violent looting doesn't really hurt big companies. It, it crushes small companies. Like, I know there was the one Facebook image, and I'll get off this topic shortly. But there was the one business owned by an elderly black gentleman. He was absolutely furious that black people were, like, looting his store. And to me, that makes absolutely no sense. Because you're taking him out of the community, and you think he's gonna come back to the community? He's gonna need, I'm finding I'm finding something else, and and then I'm leaving this place. Let you hoodlums take over. The big companies like Target, they have insurance, so all they'll do to make up the money for said lost product and insurance is just raise the price on everything. So let's say a, a 52 inch TV was $300. Not anymore, folks. It's going to be $400 because it's going to take us to sell three three of those TVs to make up for that one stolen one. And then people will still buy stuff. We're going to up the price of everything to make up for what was stolen 
and eventually to make up for all the insurance premiums. Follow the money, people. It doesn't make any sense. You know what? I mean, there are such more better ways to do stuff. I'm getting this funny feeling. All of these protesters, especially some of the rioters, they don't have jobs. What can you do about that? Get a job! You, 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 you homos! You bums! They're not even homos, they're bums! Go get a job, you bum! Because, oh, and then Florida is going up to 50% capacity, 100% outside this Friday. So that'll be interesting. And movie theaters will be opening. Although I don't think there's been anything good in the movie theaters. I, I, I haven't heard much. Again, if you want to, you can say, oh, there's all these amazing movies out there. Let me know because I just, I just hunker down and, 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 and Casa del Keller. Close the shake, close the hurricane shutters, leave the shotgun by the door, and I'm good to go. Hey, as long as I can get my cheap soda, have all my hurricane supply of booze. Oh, by the way, Floridians, guess what? It's hurricane season. So we've had coronavirus, murder, murder hornets, or murder wasps, these riots, and all of a sudden it's going to be hurricane season. Just what I'm looking forward to. But that's okay. That's it for my rant and rave. I am done. I promise. No more ranting raving. Let's talk about some AEW. So it starts off with Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc. They're going to face Kenny and Megan Hangman Adam Page. Where to start with this match? One, this match was probably a lot more competitive than it should have been. Kenny and Megan and Hangman Adam Page should have handled the, these two scrubs from Greater Britannia a lot simpler than they did. Because then they said, yeah. Take, take take this you person and this is the old fashioned this is the English like like double middle finger saying I think this goes back to the England versus France days where you like, like like way back when when like because these are archery fingers and the French said yeah we'll we'll cut off the fingers of the archers so whenever the English won they're like ha ha you didn't get our fingers stupid French people I hell insults at you I fought in your general direction. But yeah, uh, I think that's my one complaint about this match. It's probably too long and a little bit too competitive for uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman and Page. Uh, it starts off, I'll tell you what, Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc, they start off on a roll. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Havoc, he puts Kenny Omega in the headlock and wherever you go, you just break the ice. I like the fact, see, this is an instance of using a rest hold with purpose. Because, oh, God. Big Swole has to learn about Wrestled Mania. So that's going to turn to Beach Ball Mania. If there's ever a live crowd again. And I'll be the first one to throw that Beach Ball in. And shout, Rest and, so, and shout, Beach Ball Mania. Toss the Beach Ball. <laughs> Start my own wrestling protest. And listen, if the, only, if, the, if the way I protest is by throwing a Beach Ball into a crowd... That's that's pretty tame by today's standards, folks. So again, um, Jimmy Havoc would do wrestles with purpose. He would use them to block what he was doing from the referee. He, he puts them in a headlock, turns them, and starts raking the eyes, which is good. It's it's a wrestled with purpose. It's just not there to 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 take up space to catch your breath if you're if you're if you're all blown out. But no, it's very deliberate. Again, G, uh, Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc had a very deliberate British pace to it, and I like that. They even mentioned Paige's name. Jim Ross, you can't m mention Paige's name. Boo. However, eventually, uh, Hangman and Paige gets a hot tag, starts to clean house a little bit, the double teams for the champs. Hangman and Paige and Kenny Omega do amazing tandem work. I do appreciate that. Uh, Penelope got to the top. Uh, she tried to distract. Penelope is very distracting, by the way. I don't know what kind of top she was wearing, but that was just a fancy bra she had on. Man, she needs that support. But she got to the top rope, tried to hit a hurricanra on Hangman and Page, and he seemed confused. He's like, is he caught her? He's like, well, what do I do now? Oh. Uh -huh. like, he's like, okay. He just dropped Penelope Ford. And Penelope Ford, guess what? Because you interfered. 
It should have been a straight out disqualification, but nothing really happened. But the ref said, Penelope Ford, you're not getting just a finger of shame. You're getting out of here. So Penelope Ford got tossed. Um, and because of that the whole distraction with Kip Sabian, Jimmy Havoc is great. I like the fact that he found a wrench. Which actually makes sense to have a tool case around because you do have to put the ring to Although, I don't know what they've been doing at Daily Center. But I guess they have to have a tool kit around, probably just to tighten up, because I know they use it to tighten the turnbuckles. Um, depending on how the ring's made, there are bolts you have to put in. It makes sense that there's a it makes sense that there's a wrench there though, and a tool kit. Again, you have to put the ring together a little bit. And you know, every so often you have to tighten the ropes. Uh, the, the the ropes do loosen up over time. Put a wrench in the turnbuckles, twist it around a little bit. Some wrestlers do have uh, preferences about how tight they like the ropes, whether they like them, I guess, really, really squishy or really tight. It's, it's all kind of wrestling performance based. So I understand why they have a wrench at the ringside. It makes sense. Uh, then Kip Sabian. Again, isolates. Gets isolated. Again, the work gets worked over by Paige and Hangman. That's good. Um, Havoc again. He found a hacksaw. Now a hacksaw. I don't know why there would be a hacksaw by by a ring. Hacksaws and and you don't want hacksaws by rings. They're, they're sharp objects that cut stuff. Hacksaws are no good. Wrenches are good. Hacksaws, no so good. Oh wait, hacksaw. Oh. Unless he was gonna go. Oh. You never know. And uh, then there was a DVD that hit the Death Valley Driver into the corner, which I guess they, because they haven't read the memo from WWE, buckle bombs were banned. Uh, they're probably banned for everything but, like, the big pay-per-views, I bet. Every so often on a pay-per-view, I'm sure a buckle bomb will come back. Or some, vari some variations of it, too. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and Kip Sabian hit a poison run. That was pretty good. And... Then it just broke out to Tag Team Chaos. I, I appreciate Tag Team Chaos to a certain extent. But if you're going to have just pure and utter Tag Team Chaos, you might as well just say this is a Tornado Tag Team match. Go at it. Um, eventually, Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page hit the last call. They win. It was a good match. Again, the length, like, like, why is it so competitive with these two? Why is every Kenny Omega match, like, overly competitive? It was a cheeseburger match, though. And then um, you, you see Tully Blanchard yelling at Sean Spears. That's good. Tully Blanchard should yell at his daughter a little bit more. Maybe he's taking all those frustrations out for, for, for Tessa being in Mexico, doing things, inhaling things, sucking on Oh, I didn't say that. Sucking on things. Um, having multiple... Oh, wait. That's enough of that. But, yeah, so Tully yells at Sean Spears like, like he's his son. Pulls out a black glove. I know at one time there was... They used to have the coal miner glove. But that was... Not just a black work. This just looked like a black zip-up workout glove. Like the old-fashioned coal miner gloves, the one that I can remember, it's a pretty thick, heavy leather glove with like literally like metal like around these knuckles. So I don't know. I don't know what kind of magical glove that is. Unless it's the woo Michael Jackson magical glove or the OJ glove. You never know. And then we had a squash match. Brian Cage versus Sean Dean. I just called him Jobber there. He just tossed the guy around. Did the belly to belly Taz flex because Taz was there. Beat Cage if you can. Survive if Cage lets you. Taz is great still. Uh, so he just tossed the guy around again. The belly to belly Taz plex. Uh, the superplex on the top top rope. The, he, he did some other suplex. Uh, it, was, it was just suplex city. It was Tazplex mania. The drill claw finished him off. Brian Cage obviously won. 
I do like the fact that they're showing Brian Cage like just being vicious, but still doing wrestling moves too. So it's not like he's just like smashing people, but he's tossing people. To... He's not clubbing them. I mean, he's doing high impact moves. Kind of like that a little bit, even though it was a squash match. It's a ham sandwich of a squash match. And Taz comes out. Taz starts to drop a bunch of curses. And I want to know what some of those curses were. Because some of them are, are words that Taz really shouldn't be using. Uh, and then John Moxley comes out. And yeah, they get into it a little bit. Uh, we see Lance Archer. He's being up some luchador underneath the Jacksonville Bridge. And yes, for the most part, Jacksonville Bridges look like that. Especially around the river. They just, they're just they just like like piles of garbage and debris all over the place under Jacksonville Bridges. Really plus stuff. Especially in that area. I know there's a bunch of trees. Um, if, that's by, if that's the place where I'm thinking of, that's by the Maxwell Coffee Plant. And it's just full of debris and cut trees. and Because for some reason, the plants just don't die in Florida. Like, you really have to, like, constantly do gardening and, and pruning and trimming. And all that stuff has to go somewhere. So, yeah, he just be some luchador. And even, I don't know what that guy was trying to do, interview him. I mean, they should just have the camera there just saying, saying look at this camera guy. You don't need the interview there. It's Especially underneath the Jacksonville Bridge because you don't really know who or what might actually show up underneath a Jacksonville Bridge. Uh, I think Jake the Snake was probably more concerned about if something was going to happen unplanned. Like a hobo street fight would happen underneath a Jacksonville Bridge, who knows. Well, there's a private party that got visited by Matt Hardy. And Sammy sees Happy Matt Hardy. Whatever. This is when it turned to WWE because at the end of the first hour, like they had at least a good five minutes of recaps between Cody Rhodes winning the TNT Championship belt, uh, Chris Jericho and Tyson. This really begins to feel like they're taking a plan of Vince's book because it's such good shit. But yeah, AEW should not be doing that. I liked it when it was match. Little interview, little segment, match. Again, they just have like, because again, they had interviews more constantly, through, more consistently throughout the show. Yeah, they actually did. So again, if you're going to do that constantly, I do like TNT's format where they're short, quick vignettes. I find it more entertaining. And you know, oh, you find pro wrestling entertaining, but yet you don't like certain things about it. No, that's right. Because if you're gonna, if I'm gonna be entertained, I'm like, oh, so this is why they're gonna have a match. Add in vignette. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, wait, here's wrestling match. So again, that's pretty good. Um, again, they showed uh, the cuts to Chris Jericho, Colt Cabana stop Chris Jericho from fighting Tyson. So guess who gets to fight Jericho now? Colt, boom, boom, Cabana, taking on Chris Jericho, and Sammy was trying to sing and. Honestly, Chris Jericho was doing all he could not to laugh because Colt Cabana just let it all out. He, he, you know, he, you could tell like he had his head in the turn. He, he buried his face in the turnbuckle and he was turning red because he was just laughing that hard. Because Sammy's singing is terrible. If you think my singing is terrible, watch that episode. Sammy Guevara. I think someone in the comments put he's probably the one Latin person who has absolutely no rhythm. Wow. Uh, so with this, uh, it's a very strike-heavy match again. What do you expect from a Chris Jericho match? I don't think he's an eight. No, he's getting up there. Cole Cabana is also getting up there in age. Uh, Cole Cabana in his prime was wrestling Delirious a lot. Uh, pro wrestling. That was pro wrestling Gorilla. Did a lot in Shikara. Every so often, you show up in Ring of Honor. He'd be there for the New Japan Rumble, kind of like the the super experienced 
journeyman master, the like the wandering master. He he knows everything, but not really good enough to stay in one spot. Which is bad because Cole Command is a really good wrestling personality. Uh, so again, Cole Cabana, hard as strikes. Again, Chris Jericho, he knows how to rake the eyes. And the headlock uses a headlock to rake the eyes. Again, using a wrestle to set up who he is. Oh, he's raking the eyes. He can't do that. Boo! Boo! Heal Jericho. It makes sense. He just doesn't have the headlock there. It's like, oh, I'm gassed. Give me a couple minutes. So, again, he's used, it's a wrestled with purpose, unlike what we'll see in the next match. And I'll get to that. Uh, again, very strike heavy. Cole Commander, the Asai Moonsault. He busted his lips somehow. I don't know how he did that. So, so he was bleeding. Um, very strike heavy. They did the yay boos when they got back in the ring. Um, and then again, he, he began the whoo, 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 whoo. Dusted dabs and the bionic elbow from a man who bleeds. Oh, baby. Cody Rose is feeling it tonight. I'll get into that, too. Uh, he did the Superman splash. Again, the, the dusty, very planned dusty jabs and the bionic elbow. He did the Superman splash. However, that was a terrible setup by Chris Jericho. That's, that's what this match also had. It had way too planned spots, and the timing on a couple of them seemed a little bit off. You can tell that Chris Jericho was in like the, the freaking bicycle position. Just waiting for Colt Command to do the Superman pin on him. But no, that didn't happen. He he baited him and put him into the line tamer. Um actually I was impressed Colt Command hit a Frankenstein. That's that's pretty rough. Then there was a botch jump up rope and, and right into a Judas effect. Uh it was it was it was an okay match. It was pretty good though. It's a cheeseburger match. Parts of it just seem sloppier than they should have been. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's, may, it could also be me, the fan of Chris Jericho and Colt Cabana, thinking, hey, this is Chris Jericho and Colt Cabana from 15 years ago. Which, again, you always try to remember your heroes in the best light because no one wants to remember... What was it? I think Joe Namath when he played for the was it Joe Namath or Johnny Unitas when they played for like the Chargers? I know they didn't finish out their career like like no one wants to remember Joe Montana as a Chief, Kansas City Chief. They always try to hang on that that one team too long. I want to say, I, I think actually maybe both of them played on the Chargers at some time. But that's, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's like seeing Johnny Unitas in a Chargers uniform. Uh -uh. You want to remember him in, in, as a Baltimore Colt. Maybe I try to remember Chris Jericho's Y2J and Colt Cabana. As, and Colt Boom Boom Cabana, just as plain old Colt Cabana from Shikara. But that might be me. Um... Then, he, then Jericho's in the ring. He calls Tyson a piece of... His, I would never call Mike Tyson that. Mike Tyson would probably bite my nose off. I think he called Mike Tyson something else, too. Very, very inappropriate work, especially nowadays. Um, he called out Tyson. He said, I'm the toughest man. And he gets Orange Cassidy. Oh, I'll say this. Um... Today, because the job I do is very compute, like very computer boring, heavy, it has a lot to do with uh, working in MS DOS. Very dull. I mean, you see blue, green, white, and red screens all the time. It kind of gets to you. I think searching on YouTube just just for some background, just for some background noise, because I am working at home. I have my home office over there. Uh, just for some background noise, I'm like, ah, oh, shot with Brandy. So let's just see this. And, and she had on Orange Cassidy. Oh my god, Orange Cassidy is boring in real life too. And Brandy Rhodes is a lush. Wow. They were chugging those screwdrivers. I'm like, wait a second. And I'll tell you what, Brandy Rhodes I, I I Brandy Rhodes lying. She's not borrowing someone's house. 
That's an absolutely gorgeous house. I wish, I, geez. I'm, I don't know where they live, but I want to say, based on the house and the view you get outside the window, I want to say they might live outside of like, um, like St. Simon Island in Georgia. Because that's how they have, they have an amazing house. Like one of those HGTV houses. Wow. And the Brandy Rhodes can drink. She's like, oh, yeah, let me pour you a screwdriver. Here, here's some orange juice. Oh, yeah, we have Tito's vodka. She drinks the good stuff, too. But, wow, Brandy can knock him back. Cody Rhodes, sir, you are punching above your weight class. Um, so then there's a Britt Baker rehab program. It was kind of funny. I think Rebel was, <laughs> I think this was more of a workout for Rebel than anything else, though. And then we had Big Swole taking on Nyla Rose. Uh, this was, I'll tell you what. This sounds bad, but without Riho, the women's division in AEW is actually pretty decent. Um, I'll, I'll give you the reasons why I rated this match as low as I did. As I go through it. But Big Swole versus Nyla Rose. Swole starts off with side headlock. And then she transitions into side headlock. And then they go off the ropes. And it's into another side. Yeah, you get what's going on. Big Swole, you have turned this into rest hold mania. And it wasn't the headlock with the eye rake. Or, or, or the biting. Or the hair pulling. Or, or, or the sneaky punches. Or the thump to the throat. These were straight up headlocks for a good couple minutes. That's when the beach ball comes out. The crowd chants, This is boring. <laughs> then the next thing, someone pulls a beach ball out and, and the crowd goes, Beach ball mania. <laughs> so that's what this match was going to be beach ball mania. Uh, then there was a no selling. Of the shoulder tackles and the swole went into the abdominal stretch. They try to trade hip tosses. Nyla gets Nyla hits the hip toss based on pure strength. They go on the outside a little bit. Uh, swole gets driven into the fifth hardest part of the ring, the apron. Again, my contention is the metal steps. That's metal. No padding on those. The ring post, for the most part, that's metal too. Then probably. Yeah, the, the actual turnbuckle belt. The actual turnbuckle bolts. That's also straight metal. The barricade straight metal. I'll tell you what, I've seen some rings that are built with like 2x4s. So it all depends if they use metal or wood. But it's still somewhat padded. So again, the ring apron is still just the fifth hardest part of the ring in my eyes. Because, again, I guess the ramp... Oh, well, the ramp's kind of wood, so... It's pretty close there. But, yep, so they're going... Wrestling on the outside. Uh, Swole. She was chopping away to that one head button. Headbutt. That was actually pretty impressive. And then the cutter. Uh, Nyla, Nyla Rose kicks out at two. Uh, Nyla hit the spear. And then Nyla Rose hit a pop-up spine buster. It was okay. It wasn't anything terrific, but um, Nyla Rose won. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, I'll be honest. This was a ham sandwich of a match. Only because it turned to WrestleMania. And honestly, if they didn't do all the headlocks to begin with and slowed that, just like had that pace, like like go to a snooze to begin with, it actually would have been a better match, in my opinion. Um, then Britt Baker starts yelling. She tells Rebel to break up, to, to back up. I don't think Rebel knows how to drive a golf cart. She like plowed into the barricade. Britt Baker starts yelling at Big Swole. Um, then Big Swole grabs a chair and, and she had to like yell at Rebel to like go forward. And she like peeled off. 
taking out parts of the Daily Center. Parts of the Daily Center might never be the same because Rebel doesn't know how to drive a golf cart. Oh, it would have been funny to watch Britt Baker fall out of that golf cart, though, too. Because she's on her um, Rolls Royce wheelchair. The chair with wheels! So, yeah, that was it. Again, this just went on. Uh, Darby Allen, he had a promo. Then there was an FTR interview. Um, they are for... Probably use, they probably had to think of this on the fly, but they're for the revolution. Not necessarily a phrase you want to use nowadays. Um, not so much in Jacksonville, but if they were in, like, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, where else has there been, like, New York City, yeah, you don't necessarily want to say FTR stands for For the Revolution. That would be very bad. That, that, that might get them uh, beanbagged. Um, then the Butcher the Blade run out, run into the stadium. They want to confront them. Why'd you interfere with our match? We don't like you. FTR says, no, Young Bucks, they're everything we're against. Remember, the, the original revivals were fists, not flips. Cole Caban does an interview. Gets interrupted by, by um, Brody Lee. He gets, in, he gets a water. He says, Brody Lee says, come join us. The Dark Order. Could we see Dark Cabana? Indeed. Then finally in the main event, which I was kind of disappointed. It was only going to be about 14 minutes to say, and the following match is scheduled for a 30, is, has a, has a 30 minute time limit or TV time remaining. Wait a second. Clock down there says it's 9.44. Or actually when they make the announcement, they say it's 9.46. This match is only going 14 minutes. Nowhere near half an hour. It was Jungle Boy versus Cody Rhodes, the American Dream. The TNT champion. Uh, it was a classic wrestling match to start off with. Uh, the open palm strikes. Who in the corner that Cody was delivering lit up Jungle Boy's chest and his beat red. Um, again, it was a fairly fast-paced match. Cody went... I put on the figure four. Jungle Boy eventually got out of that. Jungle Boy then began to die. However, the second dive got caught and got tossed into the gun club. And this is where I think we begin to say, hey, isn't that Priscilla Kelly in the background? Because she was there. Then um, Anna Jay was also there. And Anna Jay was that stripper outfit. It's like that super high cut bikini that shows off like. Like all of her hip, and then she has the low cut jeans, so it makes her legs seem like like three feet longer than they should be. But you can never see her waist though, which is weird. Again, yeah, that's always like the a weird thing. It's like, how long are all those legs? Like when I saw Billy Kay, Billy Kay has long legs. I've never seen a woman with as long as legs as Billy Kay did. Also, why if Billy Kay's boobies look smaller? But that's a whole other issue though. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Uh, so Jungle Boy dies. Second time he was caught, got tossed into the gun club. Cody and did a headbutt. And then when he headbutt, he headbutt the wall. MJF started to yell at Jungle Boy. Ah, you don't deserve the shot. And as soon as we go back to Cody, Cody's bleeding. Yeah. That's called a blade job because the camera didn't see it. And Cody Rhodes very slowly is beginning to morph into R Ric Flair. Because Ric Flair used to like to bleed at anything. Cody Rhodes, my boy, is becoming my arch enemy because he's bleeding so much. Boy, you don't bleed for the TV. You bleed on pay-per-view. You know, you, pay, you bleed for the money, baby. But, but, yeah, Cody's bleeding all over the place, and he's doing... That was an obvious blade job because, one, there was no gash. When it's not obvious, there's generally this huge, nasty gash. You can tell it's a blade job because when they, when, when they nick themselves, it's so discreet. And, of course, oh, I have to rub this blood all over my face and into my blonde 
hair so it turns red too. Of course, I can't do that. It would just go all over my head. And yeah, brown and red doesn't look like much. But if you have blonde hair, oh man, that crimson mask stands out 10 times more. Again, just ask Richard Fleer on about bleeding and doing the blade job. Um, so he obviously did the blade job. On um, Jungle Boy then says, you know what? If you cut yourself, I'm just going to go after it. I'll make it look real. Uh, Cody hit that delayed vertical superplex. That looked utterly amazing. They're jockeying for, for, for position on the top rope because he set up that table beforehand perfectly. But at least this time it wasn't a contrived spot. They looked like they were jockeying. They both went through the table. The table broke. And the funny thing was that, that that TNT championship belt went flying. Oh, oh! you have to be careful when you do spots like that. Just like in ladder matches, those ladders, they have a mind of their own. Again, just ask John Mercury about that. Yeah, that's, that's still like the reasons not to have ladder matches too often. And with multiple people. Um, eventually they got back in the ring. Cody hits actually a pretty darn good impressive. Crossroads pins Jungle Boy. So the mutual show of respect. Cody Rhodes, beautiful wife. Oh, my boy was punting above his weight class, but he found her. Woo! Because Brandy Rhodes a couple times looked like she was going to fall out of that dress. And that that dress was riding up on her. So you notice in both ends of Brandy. So that was interesting. And then, um, of course, the Jungle Express was there. They had a nice thing of uh, sportsmanship. They said that was a hell of a match. Even though I did the blade job for you, boy, you deserve that. That was a good match. Um, this is going to sound nitpicky, but just because Cody did the blade job on TV... And was so contrived. It's a cheeseburger match. And then we learn news. <laughs> Fighter Fest is going to be two nights. You know what I'm going to say next. It's going to be Wednesday, July 1st. And Wednesday, July 8th. All Fighter Fest is going to be is probably two really good episodes of Dynamite. Granted, I know there's the whole coronavirus thing. I actually want to know how many protesters are getting coronavirus too. That would be an interesting thing to, to research. But I know there's all that. Uh, Florida's opening up. Even at the Daily Center, they could have sat every third seat. Unless you were in, like, your own little, like, familial group. Because you're not going to split up kids. Or, like, buddies or, like, stuff. Or, like, girlfriends and boyfriends, stuff like that. But even if you did every third seat, you could still fit a good number of people there. I mean, even here in Daytona Beach, if they did every third seat, if they did every third seat, they might actually sell out the Daytona One Center. The Daytona One Center would be more full if they sold every third seat than it would be for any normal event. That's such a terrible statement, but it's so much the truth. So there's that. Um, tomorrow, I have I actually have to do research. I have to figure out what the matches are for in your house put my little graphic about that um actually i might make my graphic while this is processing before i go to bed um yeah so tomorrow we're gonna have el vagabundo Ho hopefully he didn't get arrested for for looting i don't know what there is to loot here in daytona beach but i guess you can go what is there to loot here in daytona beach there's really no big stores the mall would be a pain in the ass to loot. Tanger Center would still be a, it's too far away because actually the Tanger Center is right next to the police station. So that's a really bad idea. I mean, besides, I guess, like, 
like the best. Oh, but even then, though, there's cops always up and down that road. I don't know. I mean, the beach side? Who's going to loot a souvenir shop? Who knows? So tomorrow, um, we'll get El Vagabundo here. He'll do his predictions because he was pretty good last time. Friday's going to be smacked on. I'm off Saturday. Sunday, I'm going to try to catch as much of the pay-per-view as I can. I have to work Sunday, probably until 7.30. Well, I'm scheduled at 8, but my boss is only supposed to be there until 7.30. So I guess when I'm leaving, 7.30. And then the next week starts up, and then we'll get into next week. 